Hello Internet, welcome back to our tutorial Let's Play. Last couple episodes we've been going over things around the base, talking about some of the basic stuff that we're going to run into a lot, like the crafting system, how to identify a good weapon, um, just basic, basic things. Let's drop some stuff out of our inventory, and we've already talked about how to drop things quickly. Um, so, oh, something we haven't talked about is the favoriting system. So uh, when we go and to drop something, if we hit tab, remember we can select an entire category. Well, if we want something to stay in our inventory when we do this, we can favorite that item. So if we go to our inventory screen, which is the I key, and we select something like this spike on a stick, we really don't wanna drop our weapon. And we hit the asterisk key, you'll see it now has an asterisk next to its name, and it becomes white rather than gray. We're also gonna do this for our fire starting source, our uh, lock picks we want in our inventory, and then it's generally good to carry a hammer and screwdriver, although we have such limited inventory space that at the moment, you know what, we'll go ahead and do it. And then similarly, it's important to keep a knife on you at all times. So we'll go ahead and favorite all of this. But for the sake of example, let's say we're not using the screwdriver and hammer and we exit and we go to the drop menu and we tab to select an entire category. Here it selects everything, but on this one, it actually only selects non-favorited items. And then if we press again to select, it will select all of them. Um, and this is to um, just so that you can quickly tab from category to category without having to drop all of your important stuff. But for now, we are gonna pick up that screwdriver and hammer just because we may be doing some more deconstruction. In fact, I know we will because I think today we're gonna to talk about grinding skills. So in Cataclysm, currently it's uh, 10 a.m. We've only been playing the game for two in-game hours and we've gotten, I mean, not a lot done, but we got a fair bit done. And normally we would want to explore at nighttime. I do think we're going to go out and check around the town during the day just to show you what it looks like monster density wise. But for the most part, we're binding, to, we're biding time. We're trying to kill some time until it's nighttime and we can safely navigate. Because not only do we see better in the daylight, but the zombies see better in the daylight as well. And on top of that, there are some creatures that see better than we do so they can... Uh, do they see better than us? I don't think they actually do see better than us, but there are some creatures that can spot you from very, very far away in the daylight, and you really don't want to be exposed to them. So we're going to grind some skills, and what that means is that we're going to craft items in order to raise our skills. We did this briefly with our fabrication skill. Remember, you can hit the app menu to, uh, talk, to see all of this. We'll talk about the app menu in the near future. I never did go over all of these things. But for now, let's just look here. We've uh, leveled our fabrication by craft raising. Remember, we were making, I think, fish hooks is usually what I make. Um, and since we have this downtime where we don't really know what else to do, we should spend that time probably raising our skills because we have a zero in practically everything. Now, how you're going to do this depends on the skill. Some things... So there's like really two main ways of, of raising skills. Number one is by, you well, three, I guess. Number one is by using that skill. Sometimes this is crafting. Uh, sometimes it's just using the skill. So obviously to raise cooking by using it, you cook, right, which is crafting. Um, to raise something like computers by using it, you would have to hack computer terminals. Uh, first aid, you would have to apply medication to your body or craft items that raise your first aid. Some uh, skills cannot be raised by crafting, like swimming cannot be raised by crafting. It can only be raised by using it or by using the other way that we raise skills, which is by reading a book. Now we don't actually have any books, do we? We do not have any books, so we can't show off how to read. Basically, when you find a book, it will be, uh, well, we'll talk about it when we find books is probably the smarter way to do that. But since we don't have uh, the ability to read books to raise our skills, we're really limited to using that skill, which is either crafting with that skill or actively using it in some way. And I'm going to tell you up front that the skills I tend to raise on day one, it's usually fabrication. I try to get this to two or three. Survival can be valuable at uh, level one, two. There's some crafting stuff that's that's pretty good. I will say that cooking, getting cooking to one lets you make a makeshift pot in case you can't find a pot for cooking. 
um, but it requires cooking one for whatever dumb reason. Uh, because apparently if you don't know how to cook, you can't make... Oh, they changed it. Oh, I'm so... Oh, no, it's Fab 1 now. Yeah, it used to be cooking one, and that really irritated me. So that's great. So we can make a makeshift pot um, for cooking. So our primary focus would be on fabrication and survival. You can start raising tailoring at some point because you are going to want some points in tailoring. The other ones that are highly valuable as you go through the game are first aid. Um, really helps you recover more quickly from wounds. The problem is it's very hard to craft raise first aid. Usually I uh, rely on books for that. Mechanics is also pretty valuable, but not until you're ready to create a vehicle. And then all the uh, weapon skills that we see down here, those are good, uh, but they will be gradually raised over time, and it's a lot harder to find books for them. So uh, I really don't come across a bashing weapons book very often. You can't really craft raise bashing. It's more about going out with a bashing weapon and using it over and over and over. Similarly, your melee skill will simply go up over time as you use it. And then we have the, the guns uh, as well, which are erased by using them or by reading books. And then we have the social skills. And since I don't interact with NPCs, I almost never bother with these skills. You'll see we have 9% in speaking. That's because we interacted with that NPC a little bit. These are also uh, some of the most common books that I find. So I don't find it super relevant to try and raise them manually. They're just much easier to find a book for. So really, you want to focus on your crafting skills because these will open up more recipes to you in the future. Electronics can be hard to raise if you're not familiar with the game uh, through crafting. So usually I lean on this for um, books as well. And the electronics recipes tend to be more advanced recipes. They require a soldering iron, which can be a bit tricky to find if you, uh, if you don't know to pick it up when you see it. And so electronics are like... Less important, I really do focus on fab, survival, and tailoring. So, knowing that, um, we don't have a bed here. And one of the things that we can do is look in the craft in the construction menu. This is accessed by pressing the asterisk key, which is the shift 8 key on uh, the US keyboard. And if we go and we look for bed, we don't have a bed here, so we kind of need a place to sleep. And here we have the makeshift bed, and you'll see this requires fabrication of two. And uh, yeah, we're going to want to make a bed, and then because we have an NPC as well, we might want to make a second bed, although they may just sleep when we are not sleeping. I'm not sure how that works. Uh, we did spot an animal outside, but I've lost sight of it, so I'm not sure where. There it is. We got a raccoon, which is, uh, oh, it's all the way to the south down there. So we're not concerned about a raccoon. A raccoon's not going to attack us or, or anything unless we, we go over and fight with it. So... Um, I think raising fab to two so that we can make a bed is pretty valuable. The construction menu, by the way, is different from the crafting menu in that all possible constructions are unlocked immediately. So we can see stuff that we don't have the skill for, which is not how the crafting menu works. So if you're ever looking for something and it's more like, so crafting is usually like, oh, hey, this is an item that we're crafting. Construction is more like, hey, we're making furniture or terrain. So like if we look here, this is a, a bench. This is something that would be in furniture. It's not an item that we hold in our hands. It would be in the construction menu rather than um, the crafting menu. Although I don't know if you can actually make benches. Uh, you can. Okay. Well, great. So let's, um, we want to raise our fabrication. Now we've talked about how to do this already. We go to the search menu, we type P colon fab, and it will show in order of um, skill level what we can and cannot craft. And you'll see at the top of this entry, it says fabrication one of one. What that means is that we have a skill level of one and that this is a level one recipe. If we scroll down, you'll see this is a fabrication. We have fab one, but it's a zero skill. What that means is that if we are not equal if the level of the item is not equal or higher than our current level, we will not gain experience. So we could craft 10,000 wooden beads and it would never never level us up. So if you're craft raising, you really need to find something that is at least your level or higher. As you unlock later recipes, you may have recipes that are like level 6 and you're only level 4. Um, and the, of course, that increases your chance of failing to craft that recipe. But it's ultimately still going to give you experience. And so we also have a list of grayed out recipes that are all um, would level us up as well. 
Now what I'm going to do is since we have a screwdriver and hammer, we're going to dis deconstruct some of these items. Remember we did this with the locker because deconstructing gives you more materials than smashing. Heard bang? No, that's probably from the prison over there. From the north you hear bang. So from the prison, but actually on the same level as us, like not underground, it's actually taking place in the main level. I happen to know that there's an angry robot that lives in there. So that's probably what we're hearing. So now if we smash this other bench, uh, we're not wielding anything. Wield the hammer. Remember when you bash, you want something with uh, high damage. So if we look side by side, the deconstruct compared to the, the smash, the smash gave us a splintered wood, a plank and three nails. The deconstruct gave us four planks and 10 nails. Now, most of the time, this isn't a super big deal. You know, you, especially if you're grinding skills, splintered wood is used a lot, but planks burn longer in the fire. So getting firewood, it's better to deconstruct than smash. Although it's much slower to press, deconstruct and use this uh, and deconstruct. If we look, you'll see deconstructing takes 20 minutes, whereas smashing took me about three seconds. So that's a huge difference in time. But again, we're trying to bind, bide our time anyway because we're just waiting until nightfall. So I think we can go ahead and safely deconstruct some of these. Nope, deconstruct. I think that's fine. So we're gonna go ahead and haul all this stuff over to our wood pile and we're gonna pull the nails out of there just because I don't like having nails in our wood pile. And we're gonna come back over to where the materials are and we're gonna see about raising our fab, so PFAB. So what are you looking for when you're trying to craft raise a skill? Well, it depends on whether you're trying to waste time or not. So the things I look at the most, number one, the components. Most of the time, if I'm in the early game and I'm trying to raise something, I want something that only requires wood, okay? Because wood is very, very easy to get. But if we have something like, uh, like sheet metal, even though this would raise our skill, sheet metal is a lot harder to come by than some splintered wood. And so I would rather not craft something that, that requires sheet metal. The only exception to this is if you have a lot of those items. So if I've been harvesting shelving units for the last three days and I have 10,000 sheet metals, I would have no problem making braziers over and over and over. But that's not what we're interested in. Right now we're looking for anything that requires splintered wood or planks, preferably. And so first thing up is the wooden needle, which we're probably gonna want one anyway. Uh, and so we know it only takes splintered wood. So what's the next thing we're gonna look at? Well, that would be the time to complete because frankly, I like things that craft the fastest. So this takes 23 minutes and 12 seconds and gives a little bit of experience. I would rather craft something here that takes three minutes and 28 seconds. Even though it takes double the materials, it's so much faster that I would prefer to do that. And so it's usually a balance of like, if you're trying to waste time, it's okay to take long crafts, but if you're not trying to waste time, you know, you really do want the shortest period of time, but you're also looking to balance that with what materials are available. So I think we're gonna make a handful of knitting needles. We'll just go five for now. And again, it prompts us to drop this. Uh, if we had a table nearby, it would automatically store it on the table. So did we level up? We did not level up. We did get a message here. You start working on the in-progress knitting needles, you mess up and lose 0% progress. Whenever something is your level or higher, you have a chance of failing to craft that item and it doesn't take you out of crafting, it simply consumes more materials. So like we messed up, so it probably consumed an additional splintered wood trying to get us to make these needles and then it just continues automatically provided that you have materials. This can be somewhat frustrating because there are times when you will try to craft something and fail and not have the materials to continue. But for now, this was fine. So if we look at our at menu, you'll see our fab is 44% of the way to level one. So we would need to make about six or seven more of those knitting needles. The problem is we're running out of splintered wood. Oh no. Uh, well, what we can do is quickly butcher the plank. We use uh, butchering things by pressing the capital B menu. Butchering is like disassembling or butchering an item on the ground. And you'll see we can cut up a plank. So let's cut up a plank. It'll take us four seconds. And you'll see from that one plank, we got 16 splintered wood, which is enough material for eight more of those 
knitting needles. So let's just continue making knitting needles. We'll make eight of them. And this should fully level us up to Fab 2 or put us very close to where we can quickly level. We're at 98%. So what we'll do is, is make one more, just one. And we got the message here, your, your skill in fabrication has increased to two. So what we can do is drop these knitting needles on the wood pile. That way they will be used as firewood at some point and they'll just be burned up because we don't need 13 knitting needles and knitting in the game is not really that valuable. So now that we've done that, we can actually craft a bed for ourselves and our companion. Um, I would suggest in general, if you have the option available to you that you would sleep downstairs or upstairs. Oh, it's evacuation pamphlet. We don't really need another one of those. Thought maybe it was a book we could get some value out of. And the reason for this is that, um, let's say zombies wander by, right? They're gonna maybe break in here to fight our NPC companion, but they probably would not come down the stairs. Um, and even if they did come down the stairs, we have additional doors that we can close when we go to bed. And then if we're sleeping in here and someone breaks down the door, it will probably wake us up and give us an opportunity to fight them. Whereas if we're sleeping up here, let's say we just put our bed in the corner, and somebody breaks in a window down here coming up to eat us, we might not hear them break that window. And by the time they get over to us, they might get an attack off before we can wake up. So I would just prefer that little extra step of having them to go downstairs and break through a doorway. It's just a little bit safer. The problem is if we build both beds downstairs, our NPC probably will not come down there to sleep. So we're gonna to wanna to build one. And the other the other issue is that there's no light down here. So constructing a bed in the dark is not something we can do. Um, so for our NPC, we would wanna build one upstairs. For us, we probably wanna build one downstairs. So let's go ahead and grab, I don't know how many planks. We just grab 10. Oh, we don't have volume for this. Uh-huh. Let's um, check our construction menu. We'll search for bed, makeshift bed. We have the hammer. We have, we need four planks, six nails and a blanket. So we can grab or two sheets, I believe is what it said. I'm not sure. Um, man, we can't carry anything. Uh, well, I wanted to look in the next episode about getting a storage item, but we can try now. So we'll look for a storage item and see if there's anything we can make. We can actually make a sling, makeshift sling. This is worn on our, around our torso and there's good and bad about it, mostly it's not good because it makes you more uh, encumbered, which can be a real issue when you're trying to fight enemies. But for the moment, we can make one just so that we can carry things. So there we have a sling. We're gonna put this on, which increases our storage significantly. So give me this sheet. Does the bed require two sheets? It does require two sheets. So unfortunately, we now only have sheets enough for one bed. And honestly, our priority is us. Our priority is not the NPC. So we'll go ahead and pick up what we can. Okay, well, can't really carry anything because blankets and whatnot are very big. Let's go ahead and drop the sheets. Head back upstairs. We need three more planks, I think, uh, or five more planks. I don't remember. No, not 36. Man, just can't carry anything. Have no storage. Let's head down, drop off what we picked up. Okay, it's because we're carrying all these tools as well, uh, bulky tools like the hammer. Just give me two more planks and then we need nails as well. And uh, nails are quite small so we can just grab all the nails, it's fine. Oh, and we're gonna need a light. Remember we found that electric lantern and remember we said we had batteries for that as well. So if we look for the batteries, grab a battery, we'll head down. Um, you put a battery in by pressing R for reload. It will prompt you what to reload. I'm covering too much stuff. I wanted this to be broken down into much more like narrow categories. Like today was supposed to be about craft raising. Uh, and the problem is there's just so much in Cataclysm that needs to be talked about all the time. So I'll just quickly reload this, turn this on. We don't need to talk about this right now. Um, and then we will, you'll see we have light now and we'll go and construct the makeshift bed. We'll plop it down there. This will take 20 whatever minutes. And now we have a bed uh, so that we have a place to sleep now. We can go ahead and turn off the lantern. We will talk about objects that use batteries and uh, require electric charge at some later point, but not at the moment. 
So I didn't want to have to go through all of that. So we built a bed. You'll see we're getting hungry and thirsty again. I don't think we need to address that right now. Thirst is more important than hunger. I don't know if I mentioned that in our food episode. Uh, we want to keep our character not thirsty. Um, hungry comes and goes and doesn't mean very much, but thirsty is not good. You don't want to be thirsty. I think um, really just want to call the episode. It was supposed to be an episode about craft raising your skills and it, and it got away from me a little bit. I think we went off. We were supposed to just be craft raising our skills. So that is disappointing. Uh, not super happy about that. Well, let's just call the episode here and try to put things together again in the next episode. Sorry about that internet. I, um, I'm still not good at tutorial content. Let's not focus on that. For now, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. I'll be back with more of this tutorial playthrough in the near future. And uh, I'll see you next time.